Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to round two of the July 17th, 2011 Akron Beta Tournament. First match here is between Google Frog playing CISO and Haiku in the south, who is playing something he hasn't decided yet. He's still trying to figure out what race he wants to play, probably flipping a coin, flipping a three-sided coin. Those are really hard to find, I gotta tell you. Anyway, it turns out he's playing Grecum, so he must have flipped two. And he is going to be pausing right now, just to figure out a strategy, probably just going for a perfect start, as most players do. So, getting a Faro, getting his RPs onto the resources, and also getting his Seppi into progen mode. So, and getting his Arcticus to the front, as all Grecum do these days. Google Frog, on the other hand, he's about 10 seconds up, and he's also building economy. He's getting actually a very early importer as well. So, looks like he's going to be very careful, probably going for a slight aggressive build. He has his scouting spec ops going towards the base of Haiku. Haiku, on the other hand, has not sent any scouts yet. He has Arcticus actually flying fairly far in. He probably will see the spec op coming in. And he also has a lot of Octos, none of them set to build RPs yet. And a Sepi Faro very early on, very, very early on, going out to make an independent triad. So he's clearly very, uh, he's very keenly aware of Google Frog's frequent tendency to go for re-chrono rushes and other crazy time shenanigans, so he's not doesn't want, want to take any risks on that. I should say he's Arcticus to the center of the map too. So this is a very interesting setup. He's trying to claim the center of the map very quickly. Actually, I'm not sure if he's I think he's actually going for a bit of a rush like, in the main base. I mean obviously it's a distraction rush. This is like this is 30 seconds into the future, but still a bit of a rush. Google Frog, on the other hand, is going for ADHDs, and now the rush is coming in. So here the others are coming in, and I can't see the Se Seppi and Faro actually pro going to progen mode in the base. No, they're actually just going straight in. They're not going into progen mode yet. I, I was figuring they're going to go into progen mode and start putting down Octos like we've seen before some players do, but it looks like they're just going straight in. And Haiku, I imagine this is just an echo tactic, and actually, Haiku is probably actually switching races right now. He has a tendency to do this sometimes as well. Yes, he is. He's going for that the same Billy did last time against Hisui, where he went for Grecum to CISO. So we'll ultimately have a CISO versus CISO match, but still, once again, a very cute build. Very interesting distraction. Haiku's, Haiku's really showing what you can do with the race picker. The, actual, the fact that you don't pick races in the lobby, you pick them in-game. So it's a very interesting setup. However, the rush is ultimately going to be fruitless and will have very little impact on Google Frog, even though it is an Echo Rush, because this ADHD here is cloaked. The Faro can detect it, but the Faro gets killed very early on. I think Haiku is not really caring about this, so Google Frog's just trying to micro around, get rid of that Faro very quickly. Haiku does not care at all, he's two minutes in the past, trying to manage his, his new CISO base. Jumping up, however, just to double check, see what's going on, see if he can micro, just to make it look like he actually cares, but it doesn't really matter for him. Right now he is more focused on just building up a CISO base. He has no way of knowing where the ATHC is, he really doesn't care ultimately. The ATHC is trying to get rid of the Faro though, like I said, Google Frog does not know that this is a complete echo rush, that nothing... And that is happening right now is even the race that Haiku is planning on being, let alone the tactics Haiku is approaching. But Google Frog is going for a count HC, which about, we saw about a 30 seconds into the future. He is going for that. 30 seconds down, he looks like he's continuing to micro around, trying to figure out what to do about this rush in slow mo, too, from the looks of it. No, in normal speed, because he's playing fast forward the rest of the time. Haiku managing his base. He is going for an economy build. He's got an import, he's got 6 RPs on LC. So he's going for a fairly safe economy build, nothing too risky. He's actually going for two importers though, so he is going to be going for very fast units, but he isn't going... Actually, he also got a nice little Sim City here too, so he's going to be having a much easier time defending against units coming in to his RPs, provided they come in from the front, but from the back it's going to be a bit harder. However, attack moving will be less fruitful to attack the RPs because all of his buildings are in the way. So still very interesting, and just double checking. Still managing this, but it's obvious from the time waves that the attack has been a complete echo. Google Frog does not obviously see that there is no CISO, or there's no Grecum Force coming in, and that Haiku is actually playing CISO, but he will very quickly once his ATHC comes in. He's just jumping back to see what Haiku is doing, and it looks like Haiku, for him, from Google Frog's point of view, is doing nothing, and that is in fact the case. So Haiku is, like I said, building up, getting a factory, getting very. He's not really getting infantry much, he's getting it spec ops, but looks like he's getting a factory. I'm not sure exactly what he's going for right now. Two importers is not uncommon, so it's not necessarily likely he's going for a fast aggression build. But Haiku is known for going for fast infantry builds, very high infantry builds. So I would not be surprised if we saw him build like three or four importers and then start pumping out infantry like mad. Google Frog, on the other hand, like I said, very keen on core reporting, very keen on time shenanigans, very keen on attacks near the unplayable past. And this ATHC is going to be coming around as well. Just to try to deal with anything going on. He can see what's going on in Haiku's base. He sees that Haiku did do a race switch on him. 
and he is dealing some damage, harassing around the bag, and it looks like the SimCity is actually helpful in this case, because the HHC is just attacking the importer, however the importer is still important, that should not die. If Haiku lets that die, that will be very damaging to his overall strategy, especially if he is going for an infantry strategy. But the SimCity was somewhat effective, this HHC is just hanging out here, not really doing much of anything, just hanging out, cloaked, seeing what's going on, and looks like Google Frog is just focusing on his harassment. However, Haiku does see what's going on, and he's going to start attacking it. He does have a tor he does have a soft path. He has an ATC of his own. The ATC of Google Frog has been destroyed. This import will be completely fine. It will ultimately not get damaged at all. The other ATC has not been actually noticed from the looks of it. I think Google Frog managed to get the whole position, and so it's not doing anything. But ultimately, it's not actually going to be there. So it doesn't really matter. The first ATC is coming in, attacking around the back. And it finds a mech. It's going to be able to destroy that mech before it's able to do anything. But Haiku, and Haiku is actually about five seconds up from here, so he's not going to be able to handle that mech and get it down. And it looks like Google Frog is also a bit worried about Haiku getting QP. So Google Frog is harassing Haiku's QP RPs. Haiku has jumped back a minute behind Google Frog just to double check what's going on. He sees that there's harassment going on. He knows that there's ATHCs coming in. He can't find any softs to put up there close enough to the ATHCs to actually stop them from doing anything. And there we go. There's the ATHC we can see. The attack coming in from here, the mech is running around not knowing what to do, and there it is, the ATHC has been visible, so Haiku's going to jump back even further just to make sure that he can actually stop that ATHC before it does any real damage. Getting the SOPs up to deal some damage to it, and mech as well. The mech should be fine this time around, assuming that this is the only ATHC, that, or he's able to see all ATHCs, another ATHC coming up from the north, but he should be fine. And after this, he actually has two factories too, which is interesting. He has another. He has a turret coming up as well, but he has two factories. So he isn't actually going for a very infantry heavy strategy right now. He seems to be going a bit more, well, a bit more for mechanical units, which is a little unusual. But that Haiku does that, and Haiku probably knows that Google Frog knows that Haiku is fond of infantry based strategies. So both players are going for very similar strategies right now. However, Google Frog is going for a macro fed a little bit earlier than Haiku, because Haiku, even though he is about 10 seconds down from here, the Mac does not look in a position to build macro fab. However, machinery has been reserved, so macro fab units, all of them will be available. But he isn't building it. He's building defense turrets. That's what he's mainly focusing on for his machinery upgrade. And another ATC coming in, but the turret will see it, and it will be able to destroy it in due time. So the ATC will not be able to deal any more damage. Google Frog's cloaked harassment will be no more. Except for this one back here that actually did manage to sweep, just swing by and just slip past everything. But Google Frog is still trying to attempt this ATC harassment, using this to cover his macro fabs, using it to cover no a small expansion in the east side of the map, but nothing else. So he's primarily focusing on his main base for economy, and he has two macro fabs. He has his economy is starting to run dry a little bit, though. He is building a lot of units, building some mechs, but he doesn't have a whole lot. As you can see, 80 LC and 64 QP. He will be able to build a few units, but he won't be able to build much beyond Mars. Maybe he'll be able to build a frigate or two, but. He doesn't really need to build all that much that's advanced. Really, the HHCs are dealing a fair amount of damage, or at least dealing a fair amount of distraction. So Haiku, having dealt with him now, will be able to worry more about pushing himself forward and getting his own strategy going. And here we are. So we have another armory in the top right or the bottom right corner of the map. A couple more RPs coming up on LC. And the Marine here as well. No infantry coming out of here, but Gate Tech is being researched. So Gate Tech will be coming up very quickly. For, for Haiku here, and Haiku is building another armory right here, so here we are. This is what I expected. So what I'm guessing Haiku will do is, this is what he normally does. Normally he gets about two or three dozen marines in spec ops. He sets up some slingshots in front of the base somewhere, probably in the middle of the map in this case, and then gets all his infantry there and just slingshots them all into the base of the enemy. Google Frog, on the other hand, does not have... He has a turret. He has a couple Mars coming in. He has a tornado as well in case any cloaked units come in or just for the sake of bombing. However, he's actually kind of starting to run out of resources, and this is at the same time as Haiku. Actually, now it's 30 seconds down, but he's starting to run out of LC. He has, like I said, that small expansion on the east side of the map, but otherwise there isn't really much going for him right now. The two Mars as well, so he is attacking with a small anti-ground force. Coming around, see if there's any expansions, try to destroy what he can. Haiku at the same time is actually fending off, or actually jump back about 30 seconds, but he is going to be fending off a small attack, and it looks like Google Frog has spotted the armories coming in, so he does know that Haiku is planning to go for a very strong, a very, very, very strong infantry strategy, his normal strategy. He doesn't see what tech is being built, he doesn't see that there's any chronoporters around or anything like that. He probably will if he goes in the main base, I'm guessing that's where the chronoporters will be, and there we are. So a chronoporter is being built, and like I said, slingshots will likely be built in the middle of the map, knowing Haiku, but it's possible that he's trying to change his tactic for this tournament, how it is his tried and true tactic, and in tournaments is generally a bad idea to try to get away from that. He is building a teleporter as his main base, and on a map like Remnant Springs, this is a very small map by the way, 
is probably a better idea to go for teleport in this slingshots, provided that you aren't going to be confident that you will have a secure location in the center or near the center or near your opponent's base. And Google Frog, being as tricky as he can be, this isn't an unsafe thing to do. However, the problem with teleporters is that they do take a little bit longer to get in. That being said, Google Frog is actually attacking quite heavily with these Mars and Tornados and a couple of frigates as well. Going to be destroying this factory in a hurry. Going to be probably destroying a lot of the armories as well. And Google Frog is about a minute ahead of Haiku, but Haiku is very close to the unplayable pass. He's going to be running out of counter energy. He has very little CE. He can't issue any orders right now. Trying to make sure he can actually compensate for this attack coming in, but the attack is going to be dealing a lot of damage. There is a Tornado coming in for for Haiku, but a couple of Fergus were in that battle group that was coming in that we saw. There is, however, a current Porter in the base of Haiku, the main base. If Haiku were to jump forward and send back this Lancer and a couple others, he might be able to actually deal with the air units, and then from there be able to deal with the Tornado. Or not the Tornado, sorry, deal with the Mars. The Tornado would be free to deal with him. However, Frigate is... Two Frigates are coming in. They'll be able to easily deal with the Tornado. Tornado's only dealing damage to the mech. The Mars will be destroyed... Well, sorry, destroying the Tornado even. And they're very bad against air too. So the Mars are going to be just ripping this base apart. Haiku really, like I said, does not have anything he can do apart from using this Chrono Porter that's in his main base. He has a Chrono Porter in his main base. And if he sends back some units, Lancers, it looks like he actually has a couple... Uh, these are tanks coming up. And I can't click on them. Okay, but anyway, they look like they're tanks coming up in here. No, they're not. They're just back... Actually, sorry. That was not the build queue. So there are no actual units coming in for Haiku. Haiku does not have any units coming in from the future. He really needs to be sending units back. This time wave does carry the destruction, so it will be a small paradox. But it is a currently independent attack, so I'm surprised he is not jumping to the future and just sending units back as quickly as he can, because he has the capacity to do that, he has the ability to do that, and I'm guessing he's paused now. He probably is starting to set up his Chronoport and attack move. Yes, he is. He is spending Chrono Energy, so he will probably be spending enough CE to make the attack happen. And there we go, the Chrono Porter has been issued, so the Chrono Port will happen, and it looks like a frigate... Or, what has been sent back, actually? It's kind of hard to tell, because it, nothing really seemed to have vanished when that happened. I was expecting the, Torna the Lancer and the Tornado to go back, but it doesn't look like anything's really happening. However, the Chrono Porter has recharged, so if he wants to, he could send back more units again. However, he doesn't seem to be doing that, he's not interested in doing that, he just has his units coming in from the present. Doesn't look like he's doing anything beyond that. He's not going to save that base, though. It, I'm not sure if he's waiting for the time, the red time wave to carry the saving of that base, or if he's just going to be just hanging around here, building some more units, and then going for a straight attack with air units, instead of going for a standard infantry strategy. He does have the teleporter here. He could teleport units straight into the base. He actually could teleport them anywhere. If he jumps back in time, he probably was sending teleportation through, but unfortunately, Google Frog's forces are coming in, at this time, Google Frog, from his point of view, is dealing a lot of damage. He has, look like, about almost almost a dozen Mars, half a dozen Frigates, and a couple Tornados coming in, and a Lancer as well. Dealing a lot of damage, destroying this turret. Going to be destroying the Macrofet very quickly. Calm Center as well will probably be destroyed in a hurry. And it looks like Haiku actually jumping back. His He does have the Chrono Port. It is still good, but it looks like... Yes, here it says the Tornado is coming in to help out. Another Tornado coming in here. Or no, not Tornado. A couple of RPs coming in here. Here's the units that were chronoported back. So the units chronoported back here to attack directly in the base of Google Frog before any attack comes in. However, the attack still does come in. This will help with the attack that we see right now. But Google Frog is actually checking out what's going on. He does know that there is some chronoporting going on. He knows that there's that the that Haiku does have gate tech. He knows that Haiku will be able to deal a lot of damage. But he also knows that as long as he is still fighting with large enough force, once he get gets into Haiku's base, he shouldn't have a problem. But he might be worried right now. He doesn't have gate tech. Or he probably isn't getting gate tech in the future very quickly. And so this blue time wave is not going to be very good for him. But see, these are the Mars. These are part of that nearly dozen Mars that we saw storming the base of Haiku earlier. And it looks like Haiku will actually be able to save himself a little bit. However, and uh, yeah, he will be. Because that attack ultimately didn't damage the Chrono Porter or stop any of the Chrono Porter units. So Haiku actually will be able to save himself from this attack coming in here at least severely limit what the attack is, and the attack won't be quite as powerful, won't be able to deal as much damage. Now it's just four Mar tanks coming in. Four Mar tanks, three frigates, and one Tornado. Won't be able to deal as much damage. However, oh no, two Lances and another frigate. So it will be actually dealing more damage than I expected. So from Google Frog's point of view, he's still dealing a lot of damage, but this is with the eight Mars that he had. Now with the current state of his, of his units, he isn't going to be quite as able to get through. He has four Mars and two frigates that won't be able to deal quite as much damage. Will be able to get through the defense turret, but won't be able to deal quite as much damage to everything else. So here we have the attack actually coming in as it comes in, and it looks like there's still a lot of damage happening. Haiku is still trying to deal with this, but he doesn't have enough units sent back to deal with this, and it looks like I'm a bit worried that Paradox might actually happen. His original set of units did fall off the, to the Immutable Past, but he has another 
Chronoport coming in. If that get attacks, now actually it shouldn't be attacked too soon, so there won't be a Paradox on that. But I don't know if it'll be enough. That was just one unit being Chronoported back. I don't know if that'll make a difference. I sincerely doubt it. With all the units coming in from Google Frog, four Mars is still a lot of damage to the ground base. He doesn't have any bombers coming in, and the frigates are going to be able to deal with most of the dump bombers. If the frigates can't, the lancers will be able to back them up a little bit. Frigates are main anti-air units, but lancers are also anti-air, so still that combination will help a lot. So it looks like Google Frog, despite that really clever Chronoport trick from Haiku, will not be losing this match, or at least will not be losing it right now. So I don't think Haiku actually managed to save himself. Once this green time wave comes, the green time wave down here, we will see what's going on. That is the most important thing. If that green time wave can carry Haiku's survival, then that's the only way Haiku will actually be able to survive. This is all he has for his main his main base. Google Frog, on the other hand, has expanded to his natural. He's expanded further to the east, or sorry, the west, and he has destroyed Haiku, actually, at his time. Haiku, on the other hand, further back, his green time wave did not actually save him. It did a Valiant effort, though. He does seem to have an HAC cloaked as well. No detectors coming in, no Tornads, but it doesn't really matter. There isn't a lot that you can do. He can't destroy the Mars in time to deal with this. So the Mars are going to be able to completely obliterate his base. He'll have one ATHC, one cloaked unit, and I'm sure Google Frog will be getting a Tornad or a Sop very quickly. Actually, he has a Tornad in the future as well. So yeah, this ATHC will be able to deal with some damage, be a bit of a thorn in Google Frog's side until he gets some detectors like this one right here, which is being sent to the base, and we'll be able to destroy the, the ATHC very quickly. So, right now, it looks like Haiku, like I said, does not really have much of a chance. Valiant effort, I must say, though. He, he did a very good job with that Corona Port. It might have been a better idea to try to save his natural here and to save his armories, but unfortunately, it was not quite enough. He did try to attack the main base, and it was a valiant effort, and it did do a good job at limiting the forces attacking his main base. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough to save his main base, and that ultimately cost him the game. So, well done, Google Frog. Valiant effort from Haiku. Didn't get to see his massive infantry strategy that he loves to do, but we did get to see how he tried to vary on it, and really, I think he did a pretty good... He did a valiant job. Not enough, like I said, to win, but still enough to be impressive. And it looks like he's actually going to be insisting on keeping this, tur this ATHC alive somewhere in the, actually in the main base of Google Frog. Harassing Google Frog a little bit, try to do what he can, but I really don't see that doing anything. Google Frog has the money to get Tornads, Google Frog will, be, will have Tornads, and so really, it's just a matter of Google Frog going along, and yeah, that's, that is basically the game. Haiku has GG'd, and that's the game. So thank you for watching, and hope that was entertaining for you guys as it was for me, and have a good night everyone.